Any general advice for budgeting and are planning for the future? Um, yeah, I do think it's a good idea to at least do a budget at least once. Um, I'm not, I don't do budgeting in my personal life. Uh, I basically just keep it all in my head because eh, it's not too complicated. All the things I got going on, it's actually not that complicated for me to keep track of it. So I don't budget. I don't really budget, but I did do a budget. I did do a budget a while back just to make sure I know where my cash is going. So it's good to do it every once in a while just so you're not leaking money in places that you don't realize. Uh, oftentimes it's good to, to do it because you these days there's so many different things that we just have our credit cards automatically paying for. And so we might have a subscription here, subscription there, and, and we just start piling up these subscriptions that we're not really using. So by going through and doing your budget, it's a good time to start eliminating some of that stuff, figuring out what you can cancel. So that's definitely a good way to start. And you can take the information you get from your budget, you figure out your extra cash flow. Now you're going to use that to start planning for the future. I would recommend checking out my wealth pyramid. I have a video called, um, might be called the retirement pyramid or the wealth pyramid. I can't remember. But anyways, check that out because when it comes to planning for the future, you want to make sure you have a nice solid financial base with which to build off of. Okay. When you have a solid financial base, it's going to set you up to where you can withstand a lot of things that get thrown your way throughout life. If you don't, uh, our, our, our pyramid consists of a lot of solid financial stuff at the bottom and then it gets more risky as we go up the pyramid. Oftentimes, people start right at the top. They start off with doing risky investments that might turn up and give you a really big return, but you've got no base and it's easy to topple it over. So in the case of an emergency, everything falls apart. So that's why I like the, that's why I like the pyramid as a visual. We build that solid financial base and from there, we just work our way up. And if you do that, I think you will be pretty successful. It's going to be hard not to be successful. Let's put it that way. Boba, good evening. Good evening. You're welcome, Scott. You're welcome. Maylin, how are you doing this evening? Is Bitcoin a good hedge to Tesla? You invest in both. You're very interested in velocity banking or dynamic banking now to mitigate your risk. Nice, nice. Okay, so dynamic banking is not is not a, a way to mitigate risk. Okay, dynamic banking is not a way to mitigate risk, but it is a way to maximize your cash flow. So definitely check out the videos on that and sign up for a meeting with me. Um, sign up for a meeting with me. I don't know why that wasn't already up. I'm gonna put my Calendly link here. You can always sign up for a one on one with me. If you want to have a specific talk about you, how you can implement dynamic banking in your life, dynamic banking is just a way that we can move our money more efficiently, right? It's a way to move our money efficiently, take advantage of all the money that flows through our hands. Um, as far as Bitcoin being a hedge to Tesla, I don't think so. I mean, Tesla, Tesla is exposed to Bitcoin. <laughs> Tesla bought a lot of Bitcoin, which I thought uh, turned out pretty good. I was hesitant at first to think that th that it was much of a good idea, but with after they made the investment, it made more and more sense to me at how they can turn that into a good thing. Um, so I like what they're doing. I like what Tesla's doing with Bitcoin, but I don't know if Bitcoin is a hedge against it. If you look at the market movement, oftentimes they're kind of moving together. Right now, still, if the market drops. Bitcoin's usually coming down. So I don't know if Bitcoin is exactly a hedge for it. Now, this is just the short term, though. I mean, I'm watching this day to day. When you take a long term view of it, Bitcoin could probably be a hedge. Yeah. And it may even actually be a good investment if it grows the way we're expecting to see it grow. If it keeps, uh, if it gets more and more institutional investors buying in on it. Uh, if there becomes more and more uses for it, more platforms that you can trade with it, um, it could end up being it could end up being a decent hedge. Uh, I view Bitcoin as you know like 
it, it functions like gold. It's a good store of assets. It's a good place to store, store your money, let's say. So Bitcoin acts as a hedge against inflation, I think. It acts as a hedge against inflation more than as a hedge against Tesla, right? Um, but I do like it. Yeah, I'm uh, being invested in both. That's that's good. I think that's great. Don't have any. I don't have anything against being invested in both of those. <laughs> I kind of like like being invested in Tesla is kind of like being invested in a, an ETF. You know, you get exposed to so many different sectors. You got batteries, um, you got vehicles, you got clean energy, solar. Um, what else? Energy. <laughs> there's all there's all kinds of things that uh, that you get invested in when you're when you're connected with Tesla. So, one of my favorite one of my favorite investment opportunities, right? I hope you found value in today's video. If you'd like to find out more about IUL and the whole life, check out these videos right over here. And we'll see you next time. Now go maximize your cash flow.